Hello everyone, thanks for coming to Ligot One. I'm Rudy, the guy with the voice for radio and a face with the same attributes. Today I thought we might check out the uh, pillar function in Luban software. So let's go ahead and launch Luban. And what we're going to do is go into File, come down to Create, and I'll go into Photo Magic. And here we are. You can see right here we have pillar. There are other things. Cutter, that's cookie cutter, excursion, morphing, we've done that before. Now we're going to do the pillar just for fun. Because after all, if you're not having fun, why the hell are you doing this stuff? Go into browse. I've got a couple of uh, John Wayne pictures. One's a photograph. Type. And photographs are usually more tricky than any kind of line art. And I would say that if you're just starting to use this function, you'd want to use line art to get a handle on how you're going to set up your slicing program and everything else that will come on after this. Now you can see that uh, if we go into a line art type image, it's a little cleaner, a little almost done for you. Now there is a few things that uh, you can tweak inside a pillar. Go back to that uh, photograph. That's rather crude as you can see, but if you come over here, width in X, I thought this had to do with maybe the width of it. Uh, Z I just took for granted would be the height, but actually it tends to manipulate the uh, width of the pillars themselves. And the default is 1. So what we're going to do here is do a 0.5. And it should make these pillars half the size that they are. And so they do. And as you can see, the matrix becomes a little tighter. If we go back to the sketch, you can see how much cleaner that is. Go back to 1, the default. And you have this. And this is okay for certain things. It's, it'll work. You can also do the silhouette thing, which gives you another possibility. Let's say we take this to 0 0.5 just to make the lines thinner. Now with this, if you had, say, take and put some cardboard or whatever around this image and put a light behind it, you can actually use this. And depending on the distance between the, this model, the light, and the wall that you're shining on, it'll show an outline of whatever you put in here as a silhouette, which you can take uh, paint, whatever, and trace it on the wall without buying a projector and all that happy stuff. Just something to put in the back of your mind and think about. Now let's go back to our John Wayne picture where you are at the point five. I want you to take a look at the very top of this, you see there's a space. I put that in intentionally. If you come over here, you have gap height, cap height. That's this piece here, and I've got it set at six. Base height is three, and it's touching. Now we did this height here because there's something that we have to do in our slicer, and that'll help us out, make it look a little better you look at this, printing it shouldn't be a big deal, but when you come to this point where we come to the top cap, you've got this 90 degree flat spot, which if you go to print that, chances are it's just going to fall and make a big mess, and trust me, it will. I've done it before, until I found out a couple of things. But let's say we just want to go ahead and make this particular item, and uh, Let's see how it goes. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You come over here and save model, which is all right, but it will give you a model for every one of these pillars, plus the base, which is fine if you're into doing puzzles. And if I was into doing puzzles, I wouldn't be doing this. So what I'm going to do is go over to export. And here you have different options to export something, and I'm going to do the STL. 
I'll do one of the STL. We'll just call it uh, JW3. And hit save. And in the interim, I'm going to go ahead and load up Microwave uh, Microsoft Builder. And you can see we have to go ahead and find our model wherever I put it. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Let's see, what would I call something that I was going to do today? said many times you wind up with this and it's because of a few different variations but what we really want to do here is just exactly that so let's go ahead let uh, builder do a repair on the mesh should take a second I can have another drink of this stuff that looks like tea all right now we're also going to do object, do settle, because we want to make sure that it's going to hit the plate nice when we go to print it. Say OK, go over and just save, and it will save that. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and launch Cura. And remember how we left that gap on top when I made it 6. You can see here I've got Cura at 4.4.1. Uh, the function that we're going to use here that's going to utilize that gap is in earlier versions but it's also in this version and it works really well let's go ahead and get out of that waiting for cure to pop up and there we are I want you to take notice here. There's a uh, Creality CR 10S, but then you'll see I3S and a cubic. Now the reason you see that is because I've got a CR 10S. It's the CTC type, which is a knockoff, and it's been working really good. I also have an any cubic, and sometimes what I did was I added a printer. I added another uh, Creality CR-10S. Then I went into its setup and changed the uh, size to 220 by 220 by 205, just so the size-wise would match my any cubic i3. And uh, it works out pretty good. Sometimes it works a lot better than the standard any cubic type thing. And I, I have that here too, any cubic i3 mega. And, but right now we're just going to go with Creality. Want to go in? Want to do an open file? And we're going to go back to the vid test or vid stuff folder. Where are we at here? Bah, 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 bah. Here we are. And JW3. Go ahead and open that up. You can see, and I'll, by the way, when you twirl this around like this, you just push down on the uh, right mouse button. I didn't catch on to that right away, but it works out pretty good. And what we're going to do here is pretty simple. You can see the red. Red down here just means we're landed nice. And up here, we got a pretty good warning that that top, like I said, was not going to work out. Let's go ahead and hit the slice button with everything just setting the way it is. Eight hours, not too bad. I made a nice one of my grants and it was over ten hours. But the thing that I did with it turned out so nice. I'll show you what I did here in a second. You can still see that we have this and what we're going to do is do the preview. Now the preview will show us 
actually how everything slices. We got 499 layers. Go hit down. Look on top. This function is pretty cool, and I know it's in older versions. But what it does do, as you can see here, it shows us the skirt that we put on, which this I might do a brim. I would do a brim, and I would do a brim that you know, a nice size brim, just to keep it stuck there, because. If you're doing something with 8 hours or 10 hours or 15 hours, the last thing you want it to do is fall down halfway through. So but what we're going to do, if you see over here, you got all your standard settings. We're going to scroll all the way down. Whatever these other settings are that work for you, they work for you. So don't worry about them. Do what you get, what, where you get the best prints from your printer. But we're going to come down here to experimental. This is where we are going to make a little bit of a change. And you can see it has a whole lot of different things, even the support, tree support. That's something else that's kind of neat too to play with. But what we want to do is find. Where did we go? Where did we go? We got to find it. I know it's in here somewhere. Make overhang printable. All right, now understand something. On a lot of models, that's not going to work too good for you because it does change the model itself. But in this case, the change it makes is beneficial. Go ahead and redo the slice, which will only take a second or so. And we're still at the eight hour window and up here we're still at preview, but I want you to see something. Take a look at that top part. It didn't change anything else. But it changed this top part. And from some of the models I've done, this really turns out nice. It's kind of like a cove between the ceiling and wall that people would make. But that's pretty much the point that I wanted to make, and there's old John. What do you think, John? We have your approval? <laughs> He's not going to answer us. If he did, I've got to quit drinking. Well, thanks a lot for coming to Liggett One. I appreciate it. I hope uh, it helps some people out. I know it uh, helped me to learn a little bit when I was doing this. Take care, everybody. Have fun.